Ladies and gentlemen, with this particular story, I know a lot of times I say things that people really don't understand or just say some things that might set people off in an emotional way. And I'm definitely not trying to be mean. What I'm trying to do is educate people and show people we are grossly neglecting our children and we're doing things to cause harm to ourselves. We're doing this to ourselves and I'm just trying to really wake you guys up in the best way that I know how, which is to simply present the stories and give my real raw opinion. So let me show you guys a picture real quick. We'll get back to that one. We'll get back to that one. Oh, let me show you guys something real quick. The lady that you guys see on my screen has passed away. She's actually a mother. Now she looks young and I'm going to be real honest with you guys. She looks so young. She literally looks like she, like I could be her father. I don't know if that makes her really young or makes me feel old. I don't know. But she looks like a baby herself in the face. But she's a mother. And I believe she's actually a mother of two children. Yep. She's 21 years old. She don't even look 21. The girl looked like she's 16, literally. But nonetheless, this story comes out of St. Peter Petersburg. And that woman lost her life at the hands of a man named Tyron Jackassel. Let me see if I can get his face up on the screen. Y'all look at this dude's face. Now y'all tell me if this ain't Kodak Black's retarded little cousin or something. Why does this dude look like he just pulled his head out of a blender? I don't know. He looks odd. Maybe that's a, a style. Maybe that's the way that these young fools, these young thugs are dressing now, right? I don't know. But nonetheless, he also has a name, a last name that I've never heard of. Jackasol. No, I did not mispronounce that. J-A-C-K-A-S-A-L. Jackass, maybe? I don't know. Maybe the news got it wrong. Tyron Jackasol, a.k.a. Jackass. He was riding in a stolen SUV, of course, right? Because when your hair looks like that, that usually means you're around a lot of stolen stuff. But he was riding around in a stolen SUV when he found his target. Bookmark that in your mind. He found his target on March the 30th, police say. The Nissan Pathfinder had been following a black Volvo that evening. That car that y'all saw on my screen right there. Then it stopped for a red light at 18th Avenue S and 22nd Street S. Jackassol, or Jackass, got out of the passenger seat of the SUV and started shooting up the car. How many of you guys are surprised? You just can't be that level of dumb. And I'm going to tell you guys, if y'all are wondering what my shirt says, my shirt says, hashtag, when you date thugs, you date death. And you might be wondering, is Jay implying that that young girl was dating Jackassol? The answer is no. What I'm saying is that the man that she was or is dating was involved with Jackassol in some shape, form, or fashion. I don't know if they were enemies. I don't know if they are from rival gangs. I'm not sure, but let me tell you guys some more of the story. And I'll tell you why I say when you date thugs, you date death. He was aiming for the Volvo's driver, but police said instead he shot and killed the passenger, which is that young lady, that young mother, Kamaya Simmons, which is spelled K apostrophe M I A. And I know I might not have pronounced it the way her mother intended to pronounce it, but y'all know how it is with these unique hood names. Kamia, Kamaya, I'm not sure but I do not mean any disrespect. The 21 year old mother suffered two gunshot wounds in her upper body that somehow missed the, the, uh, the year old daughter that she was actually holding. Wow. So this woman was holding her baby. Let's think about that for a moment. Jack us all. Thank you. I like that. This woman was holding her baby. She was in the passenger seat. 
their target was the driver. How many of you guys might have put this together as quickly as I did? Why would she be holding a baby in the front seat? Maybe that scenario might have saved this baby's life. I don't know. But I think that's a weird place. Like, who would ever, like, what parent would ever have their one-year-old while you're driving and be holding on to the kid? You usually will have a car seat, and the baby will be in the back in the car seat. Am I right or am I wrong? This could have been just divine intervention and maybe because she was holding this baby, maybe that saved the baby, maybe it put the baby in more danger. I'm not sure. But let's keep going. Another bullet missed her two-year-old daughter who was in the back seat. So let's talk about that. She has a one-year-old child and a two-year-old child. And you know the statistic is that usually when a woman has a baby, they usually will have the second baby within a 24-month span. Usually. Not all. In her case, with her being 21 years old, that means she was having sex at a pretty young adult age. 19 years old as a mother. Not married, no plan for your children. I don't I don't understand what career a 19-year-old could possibly have outside of something extraordinary, which is very rare that any of us get, right? To be either be a celebrity, to have an inheritance, to end up working a a hundred thousand dollar job. I'm not sure what this young lady did for a living, but it's very rare that somebody at the age of 19 will have more than sufficient funds to be able to take care of children, let alone themselves. How many of you guys are parents? How many of you guys remember being 19 years old like I do, right? I remember being 19 years old and I'm going to tell you, it was hard enough for me to keep gas in my car at 19, even though I moved out. I moved out of my mom and dad's house at 18. It was hard for me to pay my own bills and keep gas in my car and food in my stomach at 19, let alone trying to be somebody's father, which is why I waited until I was 24. A little bit later, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, a little bit more stability, okay? I'm not saying it's not possible to raise a kid. What I'm saying is that it's a bit irresponsible to really not have a solid foundation. Let's move on. Jack us all, or jackass right here, jack us all, 20 years old, 20 years old. He's that same woman's age. I like to call her a girl. She's not a girl. She's a grown woman. 20 years old and 21 years old is very young. Jack Gasol, who's 20 years old, was arrested Wednesday on a charge of second-degree murder in Simmons' death. Do y'all want to know why I believe he got second-degree instead of first-degree murder? Second-degree murder because she was not his intended target. Now, maybe that makes sense in the eyes of the law. Your intention was to murder. How about that? I don't give a damn who your target was. You caused somebody to die because of your stupid actions and stupid ears as stupid thugs. Right, Lieutenant Dan? Huh? You shoot, you kill somebody, that should be murder. I don't care what degree, that should get your life sentence. The man was targeting uh, Pariz Lovett Jr., who Pariz, P-A-R-I-S-E, Pariz, 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 I don't know. Is that how you say his name? P-A-R-I-S-E, Pariz, her baby daddy, basically. I'm assuming and I'm praying and hoping that that's her baby daddy, knowing the fact that she's 21 years old, knowing the fact that she has a kid that was two years old and one years old. And I'm hoping 
that she didn't turn around and break up with whoever she was creating these kids with back to back for a different dude. I'm just going to assume for that reason that this is the baby daddy. Y'all, y'all catch what I'm saying? Trying to get his young sister some credit. Simmons is the father of the girl Simmons was holding when she died. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. So that must mean he's not the father of the two-year-old. Wow. Mm. I'm going to read this again, and y'all tell me what y'all think. According to the police, not my words, don't get mad at me. They said, Parise Lovett Jr. is the father of the girl Simmons was holding on when she died. Twenty one years old, two baby daddies at twenty one. But nobody's going to see that as a problem. Apparently, that's just OK for us to continue to keep bringing children into this world with no stability. Right. No, no vows of marriage. No nuclear families. I guess that just doesn't matter. Apparently, I've presented 900 stories for no reason, and nobody seems to understand why I'm continuing to show you a trend of us producing children outside of the confines of a social construct like, like weddings, wedlock, used to work for us. Us doing it the other way is not working. What we are doing is not working. Why do we continue to do this? Stupid is as stupid does. Stupid is as stupid thugs. Love it is also acquainted with the man Jack Assault is accused of shooting and robbing for a gold necklace. Lord have mercy. How many of you guys read the title and y'all knew what this woman got shot over? What this mother of two children got shot over? She got shot over an effing gold chain. Let's talk about this for a moment. Can we get a hashtag BLM, which stands for Babies Lives Matter? Because it damn sure don't stand for Black Lives Matter. Because do Black Lives really matter if we continue to keep doing this type of thing to ourselves? We keep causing our own demise as black folks said look look that girl about my skin color right that fool that shot up that car let me see if i can get his face back up here he about my skin color right a little darker maybe a little lighter they close to about my skin color it's people that look just like us that continue to cause us problems but you know what they're going to blame it on they're going to say it's systematic white supremacy it's the white man. It's the police. It's, it's the poverty that's causing this. It's the education. The teachers didn't do a good enough job with them in school. But is that really the problem? When you have people that are coming over here in America from third world countries that are coming over here and learning our system on their own and becoming successful and not doing the same things that we're doing. Everything starts with choice. Can we agree to that? We are making bad choices every day. What I'm pointing out are the bad choices. Let's look at this story. Is it a bad choice for a 19 year old to be having sex unprotected and getting pregnant? Yes, that's a bad thing. Statistics tell you that's a bad thing, huh? Statistics also tell you that once you have that kid, there is a good likelihood that you're going to get pregnant within 24 months. Why not be on birth control? Now we're continuing to add more children to an equation that's already failing because you don't have the finances to provide for them. Why am I talking about all of this? I'm going to tell you why. Because all of this is over a gold chain can somebody type that in the chat please i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna circle back and tell y'all how all of this relates to a gold chain we continue to create to create 
debt and bad financial choices. We continue to use our children's social security numbers and ruin their credit before they even get a start in life just so we can try to get over on the, the system, which we're really not. We're actually just ruining our children and we call that hashtag babies for benefits because a lot of these people only use these children for the benefits that they can get from these children. We're not having children to create a legacy, to watch them grow up and to be able for us to leave them something to grow an empire. No, we're using our children as plateaus, as stepping stones. That's called benefits from children, babies for benefits. That's what it looks like. It don't, you can say you love your children all day long, but if you don't treat them as such, then how can we believe what you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah, she loved to. You, you got to prove it, right? I thought actions mattered more, huh? We use our children to get Section 8, food stamps, child support, to lock a man down. We're not having children because we truly want to be good parents. It's not all, it's too many. I'm not saying that's what this woman did, but what I'm saying is that's too, what too many of our young sisters do. That is undeniable. That is a effing fact. I'm trying to not curse. I'm doing my best. Why do I bring all of this up and why do I say all of this is over a gold chain? Let's tell you more about this story. The dad of the little, the, the smallest child the littlest one is acquainted with a man that jackass, excuse me, jackassaw is accused of shooting and robbing of a $30,000 gold necklace in early March, police say, and he was going after the shooting victims associates for reasons police, uh, for reasons police cannot explain. A, a $30,000 chain. We could go so many directions with this. How many of y'all want to go in the direction of why would anybody buy a $30,000 chain? Was the, was the chain really worth $30,000? Huh? Why would you steal a $30,000 chain? If you steal a $30,000 chain, what in the hell are you going to do with it? You're going to wear it to the club? So you can floss on these hoes and floss on these niggas and show them that you bout it bout it, huh? I don't, I don't, I don't know. What are you going? What are you? You going to sell a stolen chain on the street, which you would know if you sell it on the street that you ain't going to get shit for it. If it's really worth thirty thousand, what you going to get? Two, three thousand, maybe street value. You can't get it appraised. It's stolen. Oh my goodness. Jack Assault was just trying to find all the friends of a guy he robbed. Jack Assault was trying to find all of the friends of a guy he robbed. Holloway said, adding that investigators don't know what disputes lie at the heart of the shootings. The baby dad, love it, fled after the shooting. So his baby mama got shot, his children almost got shot, and he ran. Almost a week after Simmons, family pleaded for him to come forward. The chief said investigators finally interviewed him Wednesday after Lovett was arrested on a warrant for failing to appear in court in a different case. Can we get a hashtag flawless victory? Can we get a hashtag flawless victory in the chat? You know why? Because I'm a fan of Mortal Kombat and shout out to Mortal Kombat who aired on HBO Max. If you don't got HBO Max, that's where I watched it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think I'm going to keep my, my subscription. I really like it. Why am I saying flawless victory? Because I continue to keep saying if you date thugs, you date death. This woman had a man who had another court date and had a warrant on him, which makes him a thug. What makes a thug? Somebody who was not a law-abiding citizen. 
Huh? Thug is not a skin color. It's an action. He was arrested on a warrant for failing to appear in court on a different case. What I would like to know is what the specifics were on that case. What was he being charged with? I can almost guarantee you it was some BS. All right? So if that's who the mom was dating, that means the mom was dating the thug lion. Mom went to the thug zoo and picked her out another criminal. A dude that was worth not much. Levitt told police that Jack Assault was the one who fired on them on March the 30th. So he knew the dude. He was scared, he said. This is a guy who came after one of his associates. To the, to the Simmons family, who were buried the young mother on Saturday, Jack Assault's arrest provides some relief. But they are far from peace, they said on Wednesday, after, they, uh, after their own news conference. Simmons was the youngest of seven siblings. She was the youngest of seven siblings. Should I talk about that or should I just move on with the story? Because some of y'all going to get mad about what my thoughts are about that, but I'm not going to bash the grandmother about having seven kids potentially with different, just never mind. Never mind. Let's move on. She said, it feels good and she can rest because who did this to her is behind bars. Said the older sister, uh, LaShawn Laster. But we would give it all up if we could just have her back. Now the mother, Linda Simmons, who I think that might be the grandmother of the babies, said she hopes prosecutors pursue the death penalty in the murder of her youngest daughter. I want to be able to look into his eyes as he suffers. Y'all want to know what will make me happy? That's what will make me happy. When Jack Assault was arrested on a murder charge, he was already in Pinellas County Jail. He was first arrested Monday on a charge of robbery with a deadly weapon in a March 5th uh, incident that led to Kamaya Simmons' death. How about that? How about that? The incident involves a $30,000 14-carat Cuban link gold chain and took place outside a shopping plaza at the 2943 6th Street S. After his haircut, the man was sitting in his vehicle when he said Jack Assault and two others robbed him at gunpoint of his gold necklace. He fought with the armed robbers and they shot him several times. Wow. They shot him over a chain. So not only is the man with the chain dead, but the fools who shot him are going to go to jail for life. Now you got three black lives that apparently didn't mean much. Because they're going to go to jail for life and those three black lives are no longer going to be in our society anymore. Because of what? And now you can add this young lady. Police said he identified two of his, or maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't die. He said he was shot, he was shot several times. Police said he identified two of his attackers by way of social media. Jack Gasol and DeAndre, DeAndre of course. DeAndre Ro uh, Robson, Robson, 22 years old. The man was hospitalized after the shooting, but on Wednesday, police did not disclose his current medical condition. Okay, so maybe he survived. Robson was also arrested Monday on charges of robbery with a deadly weapon, sale or delivery of crack cocaine and possession of crack cocaine. He is being held in the Pinellas County Jail in lieu of a $262,000 bail. Jack Asal has no bail, zero bail. St. Petersburg police say that they are seeking a third person in connection with this robbery. 
down. Three people over a chain. Can y'all put that in the chat? All over a chain. This happened all over a chain. Can somebody type that in the chat? All over a chain. But somehow this is going to be somebody else's fault. Laster and Linda Simmons call for stricter gun laws, accountability for gun manufacturers and community action. How about that? Simmons' death is also part of a wide-ranging crisis in St. Petersburg, where police have now recorded 13 homicides this year, compared to 15 of all of 2020, and across the country as nationwide gun deaths spiked last year. None of those things would bring back Kamaya Simmons, they acknowledged, but her mother believed God had a plan and that she believed that something great is going to happen behind this. Making change will require action, Laster said, not just promises by politicians or community leaders. They done, they, oh Lord, they actually wrote it like this. I wish I could show y'all my screen. <laughs> I wish I could show y'all my screen. Let me see if I can do this. <laughs> I've, I've never done this before. I'm going to show y'all my screen. Can y'all see that? It says, they done made promises a million times. Can y'all see that? I swear to you, I did not make that up. They quote her and they said, they done made promises a million times. But if you followed them, we wouldn't be standing here today. No one wants to do anything until it hits your front door. Let me give y'all the fair usage before I say something else that might set y'all off. Fair usage, let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Hashtag all over a damn chain. Let's get it. Moving next to an update in the murder of a 21-year-old mother in St. Pete. Police announced just hours ago their suspect is now in custody. And within the last few minutes, that woman's family responded to the arrest. ABC Action News reporter Ryan Smith joins us live. And Ryan, what was that family's message tonight? Wendy, I can tell you just speaking with them minutes ago, they are so thankful to see an arrest made so quickly in this case, just over one week's time. But think about the real impact here. 21 year old mother shot and killed. She was not the intended target here in front of her own two children. And thankfully her family says the man, they say pulled the trigger. He is now in the Pinellas County Jail. Let's show you video from the Sheriff's Office provided to ABC Action News just this afternoon. It shows Tyrone Jackasol, who now faces a charge of second degree murder. Actually, I just thought about that. And thank y'all for posting it in the chat. I literally just thought about that. Let me go back to her statement. Her statement said, they didn't made promises a million times. No one wants to do anything until it hits your front door. So do y'all see something is wrong with our mentality? We continue to keep pointing the finger at everybody except the people who are actually responsible. Hashtag all over a damn chain. Police say he was driving a stolen SUV following the car Simmons was in Tuesday of last week. Police tell us the 21, 20 year old pulled the trigger at an intersection in South St. Pete, killing Simmons while she held a child in her lap. The other child, a two year old, sat in the back seat. Police say this deadly attack was all sparked by a dispute over stolen jewelry between Jack Assault, the suspect, and the father of Simmons' youngest child. Let's hear from the victim's sister. She gives this emotional message. I'm gonna let y'all listen to her message. Do me a favor, and to the fact that these kids survived, the two-year-old and one-year-old, that's actually a blessing. Can y'all show some love for the youth, for the babies? 
click that like and you can hug a child. Hug a child and click that like. That shows respect for the children whenever y'all click that like button. And it also brings more people to listen to these stories. So if y'all would do that for me, that would be awesome. Let me know when y'all click that like. All right, here we go. Let's get it. They're locked up, but it don't bring my sister back. If if locking them up will bring her back, this would be the best day in the world. Like if they got to grow up. They died alone, but the comfort of their mother, the love of a mother, you could never, no one could never give that love. And for those who are asking, is there a GoFundMe? Well, I, put, I did partially put it in the, uh, in the thumbnail, but I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen now so I don't forget about it later. Yes, they have a GoFundMe. Because why have life insurance? Life insurance is unnecessarily apparently because i guess that people believe that we're immortal and the only people that die are people that die tragic deaths people that die at the hands of thugs with gun violence apparently so yes they uh have a gofundme up and i guess if you guys want to donate then you guys go to kamaya simmons uh funeral and memorial services and they're asking for $20 million, and I'm sure you guys are going to probably give them $30 million. So go ahead and donate to that GoFundMe. It's always awesome. There's no need to have life insurance. Why be responsible for your own death when you can literally just have a tragic, tragic incident happen that the world sees, and you can hope that the heartstrings of good working Americans will hear your story and donate to your GoFundMe. How about that? Here we go. For joining us live at police headquarters where the family made that call for help to their community. Eric, this is just a heartbreaking situation. Yeah, Wendy, and just before some of the family members came here to the police station, they were actually at a funeral home making plans to bury Kamaya. She was one of seven siblings. The family says she did not deserve to be gunned down and they are devastated. Pause right there. Y'all ready to talk about this? Let's have a real conversation. This is going to really make y'all mad. So maybe you might be able to cut this out <laughs> because I'm sure y'all have probably never heard nobody say this before because I talk about this a lot, but now I'm going to try to put it all into perspective. Here we go. They said they're headed down to the funeral home to make arrangements, and I'm sure they're making arrangements based on the amount of the GoFundMe that they're asking for, Okay. They didn't cash in a life insurance policy because I'm pretty sure she didn't have a life insurance policy because if she did, then they would have used that policy and then maybe asked for the difference in what a funeral would cost by way of a GoFundMe. They asked for $20,000. $20,000 GoFundMe. $20,000 funeral is a lot of money. And some people might say, well, she deserves a $20,000 funeral. She deserves a nice home going. How many of you guys feel that way? Since y'all love to make sure that nobody disrespects the dead and, and, and people show the dead respect and you should never disrespect a dead person. Can y'all answer me this? Why do we care so much about dead people? and we neglect living people. Why do dead people matter more than living people? Let me explain my point. You want this 21 year old woman to have a $20,000 fancy funeral, but she didn't even have a fancy life. So nobody was willing to give that for her life, but they're willing to give that for her death. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. I know y'all gonna get mad about that. Let me explain my point. If I'm dead, why would I give a crap that you have this big fancy funeral for me when my whole life people didn't call, people didn't text, people didn't want to hang out. 
But then when I'm dead, now all of a sudden everybody like, you know what, I want to leave you a voicemail on your phone. I want to leave you a text message. Now I want to post a picture with you on Facebook. Now I want to post a message and talk about how much I was, I was missing you and I really wish you was here right now. When my black ass is here right now. <laughs> Why do I matter more in death than I do in life? Am I making some of y'all mad right now? Am I speaking to some of y'all heart? Do y'all even understand where I'm even coming from? Do y'all even understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Huh? I'm going to say it again. Why is her life worth more dead? Y'all think the family really loves her? She got seven. She's the youngest of seven children. She has six other siblings. If she's the youngest, then that means everybody else is much older than her. I literally thought that her oldest sister was her mother. That's how much of an age gap there was just visually looking at her. So you mean to tell me that six grown older people and the mother living Couldn't afford to bury a 21-year-old woman with their own money? Y'all getting mad yet? Seven grown-ass people who are direct siblings and a mother. We're not even talking about cousins and aunties and uncles and grandpas just the immediate family seven grown people can't send her home on their own dime really but they want her to have a fancy funeral and let me ask you guys a question to throw a little more salt in the wound because what we're talking about is ridiculous <clears throat> you're asking for society pro to provide you the complete wedding. Why? Why does society have to provide for your complete wedding? How about this? How about you pay for you pay for what you can pay for? You want a certain funeral, pay for it all yourself, and then maybe what you can't afford, let's say if it's two or three thousand dollars left over, then put up a GoFundMe for the difference, maybe. But why should society have to pay for something that you're gonna have to pay for anyway? Does society owe everybody to put them in the ground? I don't think so. If her story was so sad and you feel so bad about her, then what about the hundreds of other people, the hundreds of other children who have died and nobody heard about their stories? What about them? The ones who didn't get nothing. What about them? Apparently society didn't feel bad about their GoFundMes that only got two or $300 just because it didn't make the news media. How about that? Let's take this a little bit further. Life insurance don't cost that much. So you mean to tell me that babies don't get life insurance because they're too young. You don't get them on your newborns because they're too young. You don't get them on your toddlers because they're too young. They let this woman grow up and become 21 years old and still didn't have life insurance. And now she's a parent and neither one of those three individuals had life insurance. You have older siblings that could have contributed and made sure that you had life insurance. Because in the black community, there is a high probability that some bad stuff is gonna happen, especially between the ages of 16 to 24. Am I lying? Am I lying? Especially when you're dating thugs. Now y'all can't tell me that she didn't know and the family didn't know that she was dealing with some illicit characters for boyfriends and baby daddies, huh? Especially if they still in $30,000 chains and got people looking for them, huh? How about this? What's wrong with cremation? How much does a cremation cost? Can anybody answer me that? What's the average cost of a cremation? Can y'all post it in the chat? If we truly don't have enough money to give people a good home going, 
then that's okay. What's wrong with honoring somebody with the cremation? What's the, what's the difference? I had a talk with my parents and they asked me what would I prefer? And I'm gonna have to give them an answer at some point. But I told them, I said, to be honest, I'm gonna be dead. I don't give a crap. If I'm dead, why am I gonna care? Is my soul gonna feel it? Am I gonna feel the flames on my dead bones? My dried up skin? My insides that are no longer there? Why would I care if I'm cremated? So since, so here, here's my whole thing. The whole reason I talk about this life insurance. So if you feel like you're gonna have this big fancy ass funeral, then why not start planning now and get life insurance, which will cover your fancy hood ghetto funerals. I wish I had a mic drop right now. If your fancy funerals are that important, why not pay for life insurance now? Average cost, you said somebody said five, six hundred dollars. I think it's about, I think it's between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars for a cremation. And you can put all the flowers and balloons and pictures and t-shirts and you can still have a nice funeral. But you go, but the, here's, here's my whole point. These people go all out. They go all out for a funeral. But you won't go all out for somebody's life. Nobody went all out for this mother while she was living. She'll never see that money. She's not going to feel how wonderful her funeral was. Do y'all see why I'm getting mad? We'll get back to the rest of what I got to say after these videos. We'll see if y'all continue to keep getting mad. Let's get it. So again, I want us to remember, let's not lose focus. And I thank you so much for, I know I say some things that don't sit well with some people's sensibilities, but in all honesty, why do we have to have these elaborate celebrations of somebody's life and death when we don't even take the time to celebrate somebody while they're here? I always thought that was weird. Because y'all know that I had a really rough 2020. I lost four friends and a couple of family members. And I always thought it was really weird when people start calling people's phone, leaving voicemails, talking about, I miss you, I miss your voice. You start texting somebody, you start typing comments and, and they're posting pictures of the, t of the good times. I'm like, why not enjoy people while they're here? It seems like we enjoy people when they dead. And I think that's really weird. So it makes me feel like we're really being disingenuous. That's the word I'm looking for. I feel like sometimes us as a whole, just people in general, we could be a little disingenuous and I think we need to be a little more honest with ourselves. If we care, care about the ones that are living. I think Michael Jackson said that in a song, did he not? Care about the ones that are living. No, if I do, if, if you don't have money to provide for your own funeral, no, I don't believe that GoFundMe is the proper way of going to get an elaborate funeral. I don't think elaborate funerals are good. It's a waste of money. Those dead people aren't going to care. They're not going to feel it. They're not going to appreciate it. They're not going to give you a boost to heaven because you gave them a nice home going. It's still going to hurt the loved ones regardless. They're still going to cry and mourn whether you have an elaborate one or one that's a little more economical. If you ask me what's wrong with saving that money, how about this? $20,000. Let's say that they get this GoFundMe. Her two daughters are still living. Can they not have $10,000 a piece? $9,000 a piece? For a college fund, set it aside. A savings account, set it aside. Set it aside for the girls or use that money as life insurance for the girls and a college fund. And give this 21 year old woman a decent home going and, and at least explore the option. 
I don't think cremation is a bad thing. But I know not everybody's going to feel that way. But I just think it's a, it's a hell of a waste to throw that kind of money away to somebody who is no longer here with us. Yes, I believe that this, that this young mother, this young woman is worth something. I absolutely do. But I think that her young children are worth more. Not only because they're still here, but they have the opportunity to grow up and become something great. The unknown is the greatest thing. Can you guys agree with that? The unknown is the greater of the known compared to the unknown, the possibilities, the things that you could, the great, amazing things that you can pour into these children. Please believe me. We are the AFC. And when I say we advocate for children first, the children should come first. Nobody's talking about what they're going to give these children. We're talking about what we're going to give their mother who is no longer here with us. What are we going to do for the children? And I think that if that GoFundMe is going to be there, it should be used for life and not death. Please understand, that's been my whole message this entire time. Life insurance is for death. GoFundMe should be for life. I think we're going to start using that. That'll be my best way to wrap that up and explain it. Let's move on and let's talk about the thug that shot her up, Jack Assault. I don't know why I remember his name. Him and his associates need life in prison. I think that's going to be pretty standard. I think they're all going to get life in prison. And to the man that they were targeting, whatever he was involved in caused this to happen. He, he was already on the run in the eyes of the court from a warrant that he had out from a pending case. That lets me know that he probably got a lot of bull crap going on himself. I'm not saying he's a thug, but I'm just saying it seems like he got thug tendencies. So either he needs to clean that up, be a father to his children, to his kid, or he needs to be out of these kids' lives altogether because I think all he's going to do is continue to bring this family down and hurt them. All right. I hope we get justice for Kamaya Simmons and to Kamaya Simmons. And I know the family is not going to understand nothing that I said, nor do I expect them to. We're using these stories as cautionary tales to try to teach the ones that are living. We can't do anything for this woman anymore. But what we can do is for 21 year olds who are in her situation, we can help them. We can help somebody just like Kamaya to young Kamaya. Young mother, R.I.P. I'm DJ Just J. We're the AFC, where we put the children first. Thank you for listening with an open mind and an open heart. Thank you.